we're back here at our advanced oil rig design and we're going to continue to add new mechanisms to see how far we can get so join along the last uh, video with this rig we made this system work and operational so now we're going to continue with the rest of it and see how far we get so let's see the first thing that i want to do is just to um, turn the player detection off i'd rather it use a key now so you turn on the station if you're using it and we'll call this the rod positioning system so uh, we'll place this call it the activate rod positioning system um, above well head because when it's off it positions it in front of the uh, rods so that makes a little more sense now and then this one we'll put here and we'll add a nice modern triangular design so this is the one station and these are separate stations so that we'll put there also what we can do is start to put the windows that will make this uh, station or the control room a little more modern and nice so I think the three three by three windows are probably a good size like that and move, we'll move everything up once they're in place there we go let's see if we have enough to make it symmetrical or if now we have one one excess I don't like when that happens. It's nicer when you make it just a little bit wider. Actually, what we can do even... Ah, uh, no, you can't. You have to either put a singular one in the middle or bring everything out by one block and then you'll have another three in the middle here. Which is fine too. We could do that as well. Um, but one thing that I find strange is this, like how that part looks. So it may be easier. Well, first, let's move everything up. Now this is, I mean, just aesthetics. So it doesn't matter at all. And I know you guys aren't here to watch me build stuff that you already know how. So let's just uh, kind of make it, speed this up. And we'll mirror that on the top actually no we don't have to we'll just make it a bunch of windows and the top one because i mean i guess you are looking up so we do want to mirror it in theory you're using the control room to look both up and down at how everything's operating and then we can put our small windows on the corner there and whatever. But the next step that I wanted to do, this was just a bit of a fun activity before we get into the meat of it. So the one that I want to start doing now is making the rest of the uh, mechanisms for the oil well. And obviously that entails things like the uh, wellhead attachment on the top that we discussed in uh, yesterday's detailed video. So now that we have a grasp of all that other stuff, and that looks kind of cool. Most of you know that I like to also not have a defined end there, but I prefer the inverse triangle piece just so like when you're standing in here it kind of the room kind of opens up and it makes it a lot nicer we could also use the 
triangle. Eh, no, that never looks good. Anyway, that's fine. It'll work for this. So we have our control room, but what I wanted to expressly do was this. So we have three of these that we could raise up to this level here. And now that we've placed that, we can put a bit of a, we'll, put some, we'll make symmetry on, add to this, and then go to industry, our drill swivel. So that goes on the top as such and just like that now i may actually want to um raise these up by one just so it looks a little nicer like that and do the same thing and then we'll have our piping because in our my first video i kind of was just figuring out what was even going on but now that we have a good grasp of what's going on we could use these and have the slurry coming right down here instead of having those hoses that were causing us a bit of problems in the last video now the uh, RPS is all on this side which we don't really care about but we do care about our fluid so the fluid one is there so we'll do that we'll have it turn and just use a single pipe into there. So now we're actually pumping our fluid through this uh, swivel and out of this place right here. Now it would have been a little more convenient if it was the bottom one, but it's fine. We could just do this. We may not even need the bottom ones, so it may be redundant anyways. Um, most likely will be, because how much fluid do you really need popping out of this? Uh, but regardless, that seems to be the place we're coming out right there. And due to the design, I'd like to, or the design symmetry, like the platform itself, I want to maximize the efficiency with symmetrical things kind of sitting on this plane. Here we don't have any fluid anyways coming through it, so it doesn't really matter, and we could even clean up the design, make it look nice, not have these sharp edges, all that good stuff like that. And even at the bottom, this level here, close it off. So that just makes it look a little nicer and cleaner. And then we have this mechanism or this portion, which with the swivel, and then we'll need the top another portion with the actual pump jack but th that actually is attached right here so this may work in a sense that this pump jack being here now uses the same part as the uh, swivel and this uh, fluid out we could use maybe another one of these fluid outs for our oil and not have to have it coming down on a separate cable again we may be, we may be able to make a cable free system altogether now this i want to put all the way to the top like we had in the other one just because it gives us the flexibility we most likely don't need that much space but ah actually it's 30 meters tall but when you date when you take your um, first rod it's 10 meters so you have something like this and you have a second one here so you do need to move that thing up fairly high to clear whatever you're working on but i want it to start off as low as possible for these uh spouts to be here otherwise the spouts will be up there and you'll have uh the in that case you will have the pipes running all the way down the side of the thing anyways in here we have this station the sec so that station is for only operating and controlling the rod kind of placement mechanism. The second station we'll need will be for the actual uh, drilling and attaching and clamping and all this stuff. And then the final one will be obviously the pumping, which I saw someone in a video do something that I really liked. I previously had a system where it was tied together with my uh, connectors or track that was going up and down pressing this thing but I think a much more 
efficient way which this uh, person done was they put just a pneumatic piston and it was a large piston and it was activated as you do here with the uh, position and it just started pumping this thing so that is a lot nicer than what I originally had so we'll just do that we'll do something like this and attach it We just have to see whether or not this is the fully extended or not. Like right now where this uh, piston is, we may need it to go more in, in fact. And that would result in us needing two of these things like this that can be pushed extremely far out and brought closer in. So we have this uh, piston and then we have this piston suspension. So obviously the suspension is not what we need. We're using the right one here. Yeah, so this one seems to be fine. I just have to figure out whether or not we need the two of them or single one. Based on if what we're seeing in this thing is the fully extended version. So pulling the piston of the pump jack loop right enough force to lift the piston. So you have to push it down and pull it up. So I want to find out whether or not it's up all the way or not. I guess we could run that test right now just to kind of be very clear on what we're looking at here. I'm just going to put this track here. We'll put a, one of these here and continue that up a little bit and now that can be attached to the track the track can be given power and then we'll just take a simple lever to see that what uh, exactly this does and connect it to this thing and connect this to that Oh, never mind. It'll be, on, it'll be on a button. Or on a push. So left one will be up, right one will be down. And we'll just feed them power. And we'll run our quick demonstration here to see what's going on. If we go up or down, it presses it all the way down. If we go up, it stops it. So it starts off at the most extended position anyways, is what we're finding out here, because that can't go any higher. And if we go to the back, we'll see that those are there. So it starts off at its fully extended position, and we now have to compress it only. So we could remove all this stuff. But that gives us now a clear idea. So we don't have to come up any further than this. We only have to go in and we have to go in all the way potentially. So these pistons may not work as well as I planned, but what we, or maybe a, mo a series of pistons on the side is required. Uh, let's see what else we have for mechanics. The piston is probably our best bet in that case, just because it'll... Now, the, how does the piston work? I believe the pistons... Piston can expand by a current a length of one meter, making it a total of this when expanded. Making Okay, uh, let's actually understand what's what it's talking about. Okay. Now, I'm just doing this for everyone's demonstration. Normally, stuff like this, I tend to just skip over but regardless it says the piston can expand by length of one meter making it a total of nine blocks when expanded and five when contracted so that means not that it means one two three four five when it's contracted so obviously that spine there 
and a total of nine. So we have five and this, so that's nine when it's expanded. And this thing is how many blocks tall? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have to have it move a total of 10 and this only makes it us move a total of four because this is the, this is the distance that it'll move. So we'll either need, I mean, maybe, maybe eight's enough and we just don't have it move the last two, uh, two blocks, last half meter. I, I don't know, like that, I don't know yet if that's acceptable to the game or not, but regardless, let's see what we can do with this. So we'll use the blue now and kind of drag this down to there and then put our pistons right here and our other piston right here. Oh, we got to go a little higher than that, but we actually, we don't because this is not our extended position. We want the extended. No, it doesn't work because we can't spawn it fully extended. No, we can't. Hmm. Peculiar. The piston's nice because you can have it go in and out fairly easily, like up and down. I, and I don't think it's enough if we have it move only four, four blocks. We have to definitely have it move a little more than that. Okay. So that's one of our things. And then the second one that we have, so all this is configured. We could make the station that'll control the actual clamping of the, uh, the clamping of the uh, rods so we could make it this station I mean I'll move these around after it doesn't really matter and I would like if we did it as a instrument panel just because then you could actually see the different uh, like variables and factors but you have the velocity obviously you have whether it's clamped or not and if it's aligned to be um, pressed so these will be up and down buttons and then so I guess this one that we have here is exactly what we need so this is one of them that we're using for that other clamp on this on the uh, on this pivot so that one can be the same as that and then we just needed a second instrument panel that is used for only the clamping procedure or rather the joining procedure so it'll it'll be simply just two buttons or two things it'll be whether or not it's aligned and whether it's connected or disconnected so that's fairly easy and we can put that right here I guess I'll the I'll put it on the bottom, the actual moving up and down because it's physically on the bottom and then physically on the top is the clamping bit portion. So I'll take off top two here. We don't want them anymore. And I'll only use the bottom two. So we'll have one that's the indicator that says um, rods aligned to be clamped, rods aligned. And then we have it, or clamped isn't the right word because clamped is what they refer to the connected or joined to be joined rods aligned to be joined so join slash unjoined rods they call it connect disconnect connect to disconnect a pair of rods but I don't like that word because we're not, I mean, connecting is something else. We're physically joining these two things together and they're going to be now, right, joined together. They'll become one. So this is not going to be an arrow button. It'll just be a regular button. And it's a push button because you only press it once. So that's fine. That's That station is all that really needs. And we could now take the same one that we're using for that one here which is this long one and reuse it again for this part so we'll connect these to the bottom one 
this one will be the wall track which is right here velocity and then whether it's clamped and whether it's like whether to turn on the clamp so that's done straightforward the bottom one only needs an indicator and a button but we'll still start with this and we'll tone it down because we don't need some things like we don't need that but we still need these two and all of this stuff becomes nothing and i believe i made the actual uh clamp active one and then the whether it's clamped or not was two so that's all we really need let's double check that that's what in fact it is one and two fantastic so we can join these and these and then here we'll take this one to aligned and this one to connect and disconnect we'll add electrical and first i want to make sure that this one is on a different power so this one we're actually going to call because we had this one be called the rod system which now we change the name we called it the rod positioning system which i like and then this one will be called the rod joining clamp the reason for these different power sources is for just uh future proofing of systems like if we realize we need to change certain systems we could pretty easily do that and i guess the only thing we're missing now is these things actually need to also be on their own power and we have to have a control panel that moves these ones because right now they're not being instructed to do anything now the way these work are as we found out on a simple up and down button so we could put that at the very bottom of the control panel here and it'll just be this one with the up and down buttons so we don't need two and we don't need four and obviously it'll be called like this cyst i didn't rename any of these so they're all using the wrong names right now but rod joining clamp slider a slider up and likewise slider down i think on the other one i called it track so in that case the yeah see track up and track down um let's change it to track i like when it's consistent track up and track down okay and it's on a simple one and two that we could just steal from this one here. Ah, uh, no, not that one there. We'll have to make it from scratch, but it's not a big deal. Like we'll have to revise one of these. So we'll delete all this. This one is up. This one is down. So we just have to delete some things and add some things reduce the size of this not to lead to the wrong one which is fine so we'll have this output and we'll have this output call it up and down sure so number one was up number two is down And we'll just connect this to the panel and we'll connect this to up for all of them and down the nice thing is this up uh, panel that I just made here for like this this one here the last one will be used now for this mechanism and other similar ones these were a little different because they used the slider speed whereas these just have a physical position up and down but regardless we have that now and that should control that whole 
clamping clamping system which is nice so then we only have now the last one to worry about which is the actual the pump and the swivel so that's right there now this station the middle station let's say it's done like i'm pretty happy with it we didn't test it we'll test it in a bit but for now it's uh self-explanatory the last guy here will now need a bit more refinement because it's the more complicated oh not complicated let's start with what's simple first like we said we'll just take this one and put it here also i have to rename all these keep that in mind we'll have this here and as i said in the last video we'll definitely move those uh microcontrollers to hide them somewhere where they're not in our face like i want to make this a nice nice base or nice odd uh, drill okay so that's there and we'll have that on a separate electrical circuit that'll be called like swivel slash pump system swivel slash pump system and it has now electric to the battery and it has these ones here and the one button here okay that's pretty good so far um obviously let's go check it out and make sure that it works properly that all at least all the things move up and down as we want before we move on Okay, so we'll need to move the top one up first. Perfect. We'll need windows on the roof also, because once you go to that high, you can't see anything. And now this one can move up and down. Obviously, we have to actually put a rod in there in order for it to, to test if these work or not, but the point's there. Let's see if the key works. Nope, Kiwi doesn't have power, so we'll go add that. And we'll add some windows on the roof. So the key itself needs power. We'll tone down how long it takes. I don't like when it takes that long. Okay, key needs power and we need to have windows. So that was the second comment we had. All this should be windows and this can be windows too. We'll just have a, a lot of, it'll be a very bright cabin. In real life, things aren't as nice as our like these kind of fun designs they usually work in really small trailers that are very dark or you know not very nice by any means but since it's a game and since we're having fun i'd rather make it like futuristic and modern instead of just uh, dull and boring okay there we have our windows and we'll add a second row of windows just need side ones that are slanted not these but rather these longer though this and for the sake of making it look nice we'll have that there so that makes it look much nicer and the thing that we've noticed last time I like to just um, do that so it's at least Inside it feels like it's a continuous kind of ball shaped thing. And I mean if we want to go extremely ham We could even do this Which is probably my favorite I've done this on the ships as well, so it looks as flush as possible Like that and just across now we missed these spots, which is fine and also I do want to put lights in here just because it's getting dark when we walked in and we'll have them 
turn on automatically and then we'll have lighting on its own separate circuit here okay call it lighting systems lighting slash critical so this will be lights cameras anything that's for security for whatever that's kind of a standard thing I put on my ships as well I just call it lighting and critical and that's the last one you want to turn off okay cool also we could round off the top make this look neat there's other things we can do put solar panels on it and stuff but for now this will be our little base of operation uh okay let me um take a little break and I'll get back soon so continuing forward we have this uh, control panel set up and we still haven't renamed some of the things. So everything on this left one is rightly is named correctly, but here it's not. So we have, well, join on join rods. This is actually right. Oh, this one is right. Move clamped rod up. So this is the station for the that middle one or the joining clamp track. Okay, so this is actually right. This one here is not the joining clamp. This is for the swivel and the actual pump jack. So we'll call that swivel pump jack track up, I believe is what we called what we wrote this to be. Yeah, track down and track up. So track up and then this one is track down okay also that station now needs to have the control panel for the rotary table so I'd like to have a throttle for this and then the RPS and clamp so first things first we'll we have the swivel pump on one of these, but now we could make our pump jack, or rather the uh, rotary table on one. So, that and rotary table, obviously connected to battery, and then this one is connected to our electricity in the uh, motor. We could have a couple of things here. We could have a dial for the RPS of that thing. Let's put it on this side of the table just so it's not as confusing because on this left side, we'll actually have stuff related to the pump. But here we'll have the rotary table. RPS. And I'm not sure what it can be. Let's just put like 20 for now. And then we'll have a keypad. We could have a throttle actually. A throttle for that rotary table as well. The one thing I want to do though is I want to make it only going down to zero. So, and maybe we had an issue when we were going up all the way to one but let's just leave it this way for now and we'll see if uh, so we can put this throttle to there then this one is the RPS and the last one is the clamp on the rotary table so that'll be just a regular toggle button and that connects to there and all this connects to the bat to the electricity here for the rotary table. I don't know why, like you could spin the rotary table in a negative direction. Maybe you need to do that if you're trying to um, minimum, maybe if you're trying to go back up or something. So I'm actually going to try to put a negative number on it as well. And we'll call this rotary table power 
rotary table, right? Yeah, rotary table. Okay. Rotary table power. We have the RPS. We have that stuff. We have this one to control this to go up. So that all seems to be in check now. There's obviously the hole there. So that's good. This whole rotary table could actually even be placed down one block and just be exposed like that. I think that's nicer. For that reason, we could also bring this down even, this track down one more and all this stuff can go down one more level. Um, the benefit will be just that everything, that it lets us go that much lower, like if, in case the uh, wellhead or the rod ends up at a lower level. So I may as well just do that. We'll connect to everything and we'll just bring it down by one. And then we will add one of these to fill in the gap. Not a big deal. Okay. Also, I don't know, like if we try to start thinking about aesthetics, it's definitely too early, but something like this would make this thing look cooler. Not sure about the motor in the back, but at least right here, we could do something like that and have the pyramid on the corner just looks a little more natural and nicer that's fine in the back and we now have these things so see how we didn't actually move them down which is all good we did it now so that's where we need to have our slurry pumping into so the slurry th part now is remaining and the part with this uh this pneumatic piston we got to see how to do that my gut is telling me to just make it go up and down eight i kind of i don't really want to make a separate track for this thing to go up and down um so i'm thinking the pneumatic is the way i want to go well actually let's start at the top so if we'll start here and I mean, too bad. The fact that it expands doesn't really help us. What I mean expands is the, like, if even if we can go down to the blue, like we have here, that doesn't help us because we can't make it start in that position. We can only make it start in the position where it expands. Now let's confirm this because we confirmed the other thing. We didn't confirm that this is in fact the maximum that this thing can expend, extend. And I like to be sure before I build something and possibly have it not proper. Okay, so we can expand it and that's it. Okay, so that is it. And because we don't start off in the spawned position where it's fully compressed which would be ideal for us we only have two blocks to gain that would mean we'd have to make this piston start off in a place where it hmm, either start off in a position or it has something else do we have any kind of other pivots or mechanics let's see what we have we have just a regular pivot we have our track we know that Suspension, pneumatic, hmm. See, the pivot's interesting because the way a pivot works, see, I'd be curious, maybe it's possible to make it with a pivot. Like all those real life wellheads have those pivoting parts Let's see if I can find a picture. So like this, maybe we could do something like that where it actually moves up and down. Based on what we just saw, this type of mechanism could work if this was our pivot point, and then this would move up and down on this axis, so it would push the pump rod up and down. But the only thing that doesn't work is that the pump rod actually starts in the fully extended position. We would need it to start in a position where it's um, in the midpoint. So it's a bit 
like that's not a parameter we could set it would be nice if we could make it start in the midpoint because in that case we'd be able to actually use it as such now obviously there's workarounds like we could have a a connector up here and have the have this thing manually pu push down with a track until it reaches the midpoint and then the connector joins to that part that goes up and down so maybe that's something i'll explore um but otherwise a more simple system would for sure be what we originally had then but maybe just using our small small connectors instead of the big ones i don't know if they're strong enough that's the only thing but let's assume they are and this way we just have to give it forward push and then downward push or rather we start with a downward push and like if we do this to there and have well this actually has to start up there so this guy the track connector for the track starts up here like that and makes its way down all the way to the bottom interesting like we could actually build something in here but not oh yeah in there maybe nicer if it's that way like if i orientate it if i turn this thing towards it like that oh that'll look nicer and this turned like that and that can connect to the body and this connects to there Okay, well that, in this case, that works. We just have to confirm that it's powerful enough. And let's add ourselves another power supply. We'll call it the piston, or not piston, what is that thing called? Pump jack. Do I already have a pump jack one? I think I might. Pump system, swivel and pump jack. Okay, so I'd already have that, and I don't need two of these. The left one is not in use. We can remove it. Okay. Pump jack, pump jack, and up here to the pump jack. So because this is number based and not because it's um, and not based on up and down things, we could actually just make a simple numerical um, switch box that pushes that up and down. Hopefully it has enough power, but this numerical switch, which we're gonna build in a second here. Let's take an empty one. It'll just be a simple button that we toggle. That is the pump jack, pump jack mechanism. And we'll give it power to the pump jack. Okay. Other than that, and that can go all the way up. I don't really, that's fine. Look, it's fine the way it is. We could make it even look nice, I'm sure, if we had something cool like. Eh, no, never mind. That looks good as it is. Okay, in here we have obviously the button on, so we have the pump jack. And that's all it is, so just those two things. And in here, this has to be set to output. Okay, so when you when you press the button, we want it to go through a series of things. So the but when the button's activated, I want it to start a timer that has a reset. So outputs an on when the timer reaches its duration. So outputs on, and then we want this one that outputs an on when the timer is less than its duration. So this is enable the timer. So this, in this case, 
we're working it's an on signal when it's less than its duration and we need it to go to a switch box the timer will measure out the time it takes but let's guess like three seconds one two three no definitely not three maybe five so we'll put that and we'll just say when this is on we have a timer that works for three seconds and it'll be pushing our uh, pump jack in a downward direction so we'll go negative one let's see if this works in theory now all that's going to happen is our button's going to activate a system there our button's going to activate a system that pushes this down for five seconds and that's it and that's on purpose i just want to see if five is enough for it to go all the way down if it has enough strength all that good stuff that wrong button So either it doesn't have enough strength. Hmm. I can't go up there and see the values. But what I want to do is check that they're wired for power, which I believe they are. So then they're probably too weak to do it. We could change the gear ratio to increase it. Maybe that'll help us. Um, but just as a quick double check before we do any of that. I just want to make sure that our mechanism works. So let's just take this. We'll put it up here. I'm going to make a save as real fast. So I don't overwrite what, what I've made. And we'll just delete this, delete this. Sure. Put that there and then attach these things like that i really don't care how it looks okay now with the toggle button or a push button we should be able to move, move these up and down if my if these push buttons can do it that means then that it's obviously that the other thing is underpowered so let's go down and down let's go up and up give this power as well we're gonna delete this anyway so it doesn't matter but it's not perfect okay i have a feeling that this will work so then it was those things that were underpowered let's go down yeah, see and up okay so that's what we need if we go back to our save file here that had these let's see if we can play with well, also our microcontroller may be wrong, to be honest. So before we even do the microcontroller, I'd like to have just a simple um, throttle box that is actually just connected to my two tracks because that will give us, oh, and for whatever which reason that was there too. That's fine. Let's try that. This may work. And if it does, then it means that the microcontroller that I did was wrong for now. So, oh, we got to go down. Nope, it works. Okay. And it's obviously not going to go up, but we've proven the point. So the microcontroller was wrong. And let's see why it was. So we need it to go in the positive direction that's probably why so positive is actually down for whatever reason i usually don't do that let's reverse it back just easier to memorize that down is negative so in this case and it seems to move fast like it's not gonna be five seconds so in this maybe two two and a half seconds and at uh, negative one so it's going down and then we're gonna have a not button when it's not pressed then this is reset that's fine now after the timer ends 
so outputs an on when the timer reaches its duration. So same one. And this one is also activated by this. Now, when it reaches the end of its duration, meaning that this 2.5 is up, this or this is gonna reset that guy. But the complex part is that I need it to also push it upwards. So I need to have another switch box here that's activated. So the value, we need a pass through value. So I think we may need a um, value to pass through on and off. <clears throat> that separates it. I don't want to separate it either. <laughs> Let me think on this. I'll be right back. I got it working and I'll explain how I did it. There's a little bit of downtime, so we may be able to reduce the time so it goes up and stops immediately. And then if you turn off the button, it brings it back to the top. Like say we do this, I want it to always restart at the top instead of somewhere in the middle. Like again, I demonstrate there, press that and it makes it its way back to the top. So the way I did it is simple. We actually used the, uh, let's see what the function's called, blinker. So you could probably put it to 2.4 maybe or 2.3 even, but forget the bottom part for now. So the upper part, we have the button pressed. We gotta make these the exact same time, so 2.4. The button's pressed and then it, inter it switches between on or off, which switches the numerical switch box between negative one and one. That makes sense, fairly easy, ver I mean very easy. Now, the only downside would be if you turn off the controller halfway through and it's somewhere in the middle, like the actual um, pump jack is somewhere in the middle of its moving up and down. When you turn it on the next time, it's going to resume back at going up and down from that point. So it's not going to be sequential, like it won't be at the part where you need it to be. So hence, I've added this part where if it's not pressed, it just goes back to the top part and, and i guess this also isn't great because it goes back to the top part and stays negative one like it keeps pushing it and pushing it and pushing it so i should actually put a timer here the timer being outputs an on signal when the timer is less than its duration so if it's not on it activates the timer which does this and that timer is only need only needs to be the 2.4 seconds because that's all it takes to get to the top so we can have the timer at two i mean even if we do 2.5 it doesn't matter it could be on for an extra second now what resets it is if you press the on button because then you're resetting the whole thing so now you're not constantly pushing it up and push like just endlessly pushing it up it doesn't make any sense so that will work now. And that's our pump jack. And it actually looks kind of cool too. I do like the, the look of it. I will only add this at the top. So it looks a little more polished. And we don't need this. So while it was a great idea in theory, I, without uh, going too crazy into trying to solve it, I think this is a clever solution. With all this now, we can get ourselves almost drilling. The only thing that we can't do yet is actually drill because of the... We need a slurry. So stay tuned for the next video, the final or second last part where we're going to do the slurry. And then once we get it going, we'll make another video for the actual process of the oil. So stay tuned.